Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. Yeah, I'm quite happy I did that that last video yesterday about Bitcoin to warn you that we can still expect another dip down, which then also happened, I think, one or two hours after my video um, towards the weekly candle close. As you know, towards the weekly candle close, there's always a bit of volatility. And yeah, this was the volatility um, that we saw yesterday, late yesterday from Sunday to Monday. And I haven't changed the WaveCon from the last video, so the adjustment I made to warn you, um, yeah, so far was correct. Now it's time to basically evaluate where we are. Um, for me, the signal here was that we completed a clear five wave impulse to the downside. Um, does that mean we definitely have to go up? No, it doesn't. And for me, therefore, these confirmation levels are so important. As I said before, even when we had a different wave count on this way down and we considered that, you know, maybe uh, that's how it, it looked like in the beginning that, you know, maybe the, um, where were we? Here, so that maybe the low was already in here. Yeah, um, here. Yeah, and then, but then I, yesterday I told you this long sideways movement doesn't really look like we're going up. And it more sort of smells like a wave four, is what I said. Um, but even in this wave count, you know, you could count where five waves down is complete. The problem is, and this is what I always said, unless we go above this zone here, yeah, especially here, the 20,000, roughly 20,760 level, the wave four high, unless that's the case, we are still in a downtrend. Yeah. And as per trend theory, when you are in a downtrend and you don't break that downtrend by making a higher high and a higher low, you have to comp you have to expect further lows. And as per this, and knowing that a wave four can be very long and boring like this one here, I told you yesterday that we probably can expect another dip or at least need to be on high alert that another dip could occur, which I think came right on time that warning. Good. So, but now we need to, so let me just readjust the wave count again to where we had it yesterday. Okay. So now we just need to readjust. Yes. Five waves down complete again. Does it mean we need to be, we, we can be optimistic that we go up now? Not necessarily. By the way, I gave you also as a, as a key level to complete this wave C of the wave two and we'll end the wave five that 19,450 level. Um, that was the next target. Now we came down to 19,500, I think pretty close. In such a volatile market, you could consider that target reached in terms of, okay, we've done what we need to do, right? Um, but yeah, we, we now need to be on high alert that this correction is over. That was a clear impulse down that possibly completed this. And what we currently see here is looking good, but it's a very weak evidence only that this com is complete now. Very weak evidence. Now, of course, you can speculate that now the wave down is done, but we have no confirmation yet. As I always say, without confirmation, you can only guess. Yeah, we have completed all the requirements as per the wave count, but there's of course more to that. What I would want to see now, what I would want to see now is first of all, <clears throat> we of course need to hold this swing low, which is at 19,500. That's of course minimum condition for us to go up. <clears throat> but the key level that we now need to break is basically this high here at 21, no, 20,170. This is a key level. Unless we trade above that level, unless we trade above that level, unless we break that high, we still have to expect lower levels. And I'm not talking about maybe a quick, you know, a week to the upside. I want to have a substantial break in the current environment, at least. Yeah. Which means we come down, retest and then go higher. Even that is not a guarantee that we go up, but it's at least the first good evidence we can get. And the next one would then be to break here, this zone between waves one and two. So basically getting above 20,761, there would at least be additional evidence that would bolster the assumption that the low was in here. 
So these are the key levels. The, the problem is we don't know if that move to the downside is complete. Yes, we can count five waves as complete. That again assumes that the higher level assumption is correct because other wave counts are possible in this um, environment here as well. Just to give you an idea what would also be possible, and I simply don't know which one, you know, nobody knows. Um, these are simply assumptions, right? Um, so we could just say that Um, that this here, where's the wave W now? We could say that all of this was just a corrective move, a W, X, Y pattern. And in this scenario, we have done, we are now in the wave Y. And if we are in a wave Y, the wave Y itself has three waves. And that would be an assumption that we've made here possibly with this five wave move. Well, as I said yesterday, we could already count five waves complete here. So it could very well be we had a wave A, we had a wave B, and we now still have another five waves down coming. Um, again, we have to be on high alert that different wave counts are possible here due to the uncertainty in the market, um, which I referred to back yesterday as well. So unless we can really get this confirmation of breaking that swing high. And I mean, at the moment we see a nice reaction here. Yeah? So it's not like I'm telling you we go down. We need to wait for this reaction now. Again, in a range here, in a tight range between 20,000 20, um, here, 100 and to be specific, 20,170 and to the downside, it's the $19,500 level. These are the key levels that are relevant. And very simply, if we break that wave four high, we can be on, um, we can be more optimistic that the low here is finally in. It continues to be that we can see, um, can we see a bullish divergence still, or is that messed up now? We can still see a bullish divergence, but it has weakened with the latest dip. Uh, so from that low here to that low, it's still a higher low. Yeah, so it's another, and we have a bullish crossover now. That That's actually interesting. We now have a bullish crossover on the four hour chart. We didn't have one yesterday. Yeah. So that's the first time since we had that bullish divergence that we also have a bullish crossover. I think I showed it to you yesterday, either in the Bitcoin or Ethereum video, that the bullish crossover yesterday was just prevented. Just, just prevented. So now we have it. So that's really a good, um, it's a good signal, even though th there is no bullish candle yet but um, it's only a green one, but not like a bullish engulfing one. But let's see, I think today in the trading session, we will know more and uh, hopefully that helped you to understand where we're going. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.